All right, all right. I got a sign saying that it, we are good to go. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. I really hope the digestion is not too difficult for you. But if you really need to take a nap, don't worry, I won't be offended. Um, uh, thanks a lot also for the uh, Vox Day staff for uh, organizi organizing the event and the presentation. And without further ado, let's talk about UX UI treasure hunt. So first, I must give you a little bit of context because you probably don't know Passport. And if you do, thanks. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, we are doing um, Password Manager, as you can see on the screen over there. And we are quite proud of our security model, for example. Um, we use asymmetric key uh, encryption, uh, asymmetric encryption with a private key and a, and a master password, for example. So that means that every time you need to, you connect to your accounts, uh, you have a two-factor authentication, for instance. We have a great uh, granular share also for passwords, which is really nice. I won't go into detail, but otherwise I will take the 15 minutes of the presentation just talking about the product, just to give you a little bit of context. And uh, my name is Vian Muller, and I'm head of uh, design and comms at Passport. So, treasure hunt. Of course, we need something called the treasure map to guide us through the, the whole process. And this is how it looks like for us. It's not just for that presentation. All those steps that you see, we use all of them for uh, releasing a new feature. And you see that X over there? It's actually a new feature that is released once we've been through the, that whole process. You see the very first one? We are going to begin with this one, which is, what is the problem? And it's, it's actually a very important question that you need to ask yourselves every time you're building a new feature, because um, sometimes it can happen that you are solving a problem that doesn't exist. So asking that question is extremely important. And I made that introduction about Passport to, uh, to explain the problem that we had in the past. Um, since you need a private key and a master password or a passphrase to connect, if you lose any one of them or both, uh, in that case, uh, you'll end up with this screen, meaning that you cannot uh, log into your account, which is quite problematic. So I think it qualifies as a problem that we needed to solve. And uh, shocking, we call that uh, account recovery. And um, it's quite an important feature that we've been working on for a year, and I'm sharing that experience with you. So the next step in the, in the map that you saw is the, um, the, the characters that are uh, in that story. And as you can imagine, the, the user is uh, quite an important one since uh, he cannot access to his account since, uh, because he lost his passphrase or his private key. And as you can see, they are quite desperate. But there's another character uh, that is also extremely important. It's the admin. They've seen so much most, most of the time, and it's not the first time it happens. And uh, they're actually stuck uh, in that position because they can't do anything besides creating another account for the user. So you can see the pain is shared on both sides. So now we know who we are talking to, who is involved in that process. So we can move down the, that, uh, that path that we had in the treasure map by now defining an approach, how we are going to solve that uh, as, a, as a big picture. So uh, we brainstormed, we talked together, and we figured out there are two main uh, solutions for that and uh, um, an improvement for the, the second solution. The first one is uh, sharing the secrets, uh, all the secrets, even the personal ones, and storing them securely, obviously, uh, with an organization-wide key. So if you lose your access, then you can create another account and. Um, retrieve those passwords. I personally, it's not my favorite because you still lose the first account and you're sharing your secrets with the whole organization, even if it's secure. And that's something that doesn't ring a bell for me. So that's why there's a, a, a second solution, which is providing a new key. So basically, instead of uh, having a, a backup of the, the passwords, we can have a backup of the key, the private key. And uh, with a, a very thorough process, and I will not go into details here, uh, we can, of course, secure them with an organization-wide key, just like the passwords. But when the user is uh, lost, cannot connect to his account, then he can ask an admin to recover that key, which is far more uh, convenient from my point of view, since you're not losing your first account. 
All right, so now we have those approaches. Uh, there are pros and cons for uh, both of them. And since Passport is open source and community driven also, uh, we have to ask the community and the clients. So that's why we created a survey, a very short one. It was less than 10 minutes. Of course, we had to explain the, the whole process also, what was behind. But uh, in the end, it was quite an uh, interesting experience. And we figured out that the community also agreed with us and with me, with the, the second solution was better. So we had an approval from the people using Passport, which was nice. So we know where we were heading. And now it's time to move again on that map and go to the next step, which is developing the ideal flow for this, for this feature. And you can see uh, a full representation of the flow that we have with the users, the server, and the, the, the admins. And uh, every square that you see, the, every rectangle is actually a step and the actions that need to be, to be done. But let's have a look, a uh, closer look to user flows. The, the flow for the, for the users. It's still quite packed, and again, I'm not going to detail everything. Again, just 15 minutes presentation. And what is the most important is to know that all those rectangles are actually screens that we'll need to design, and to make sure that the experience is as uh, simple and e uh, understandable as possible. Uh, we don't want to have a, some kind of cognitive overflow because you have too many information for the users, so that's why we had to chop them down in uh, multiple screens. They're easily understandable. But on the other side, for the admin flow, um, the other point of view, uh, you need to define um, policies and uh, approve the, the account recovery. This can be a little bit more complex because admins are used to have more complex interfaces and more complex... Uh, um, ideas and settings. So as you can see, there are far less uh, screens that we need, to, we need to create and, and uh, other actions that happen behind the hood. All right, so we have another view. Uh, now with all the, um, all the screens, and we will have to create wireframes, the UI part. And for that, uh, we are gathering tools that we already have, which is the design kit. And it's basically all the components that Passport has. Uh, detailed in every scenario possible, uh, every state that uh, you can have. And the idea is to take all those elements and bring them together to create easily a new, uh, a new screen, and the, the, the new interface that we need for the feature. And so by using this tool, now we are going down that road again. The next step is creating the wireframes in depth. So I have some examples here for the, for the user flow. Uh, obviously, n they are not all e here, but it's to illustrate the fact that we have very, very simple uh, screens when you just need an action and a, a very short explanation. And for example, you have an action over there, the third one, which is uh, creating the other, another passphrase to secure the whole process. And of course, every time we are doing the flow and uh, the, the, the screens, we have the users in mind, and also we have the security in mind, so to make sure that uh, everything is going in the right order and the right direction. For the, um, the administrator, uh, as I said, we can have more complex um, interfaces. For example, on the right, you can see the policies. Uh, is it mandatory for every user? Is it opt-in and opt-out? Or you can completely dis disable it as well as the organization recovery key. It's the one that is encrypting everything, so they need to provide one. So everything can, be, uh, can fit inside one screen, so it's way easier uh, for admins. And of course, they need to uh, reject or approve an account recovery request, so this is how it, will look like. it looks like, actually, right now. All right, so the, those uh, flow, those screens are um, really, impo it's Im really important to use the design kits and trying to avoid creating new interfaces that uh, users and admins haven't seen before. Uh, we try to rely as much as possible on behavior that they already know, so that way uh, they don't end up in the future with a futuristic in interface that they don't understand the thing and they don't know what they're supposed to do. So uh, we try to stick with what we have and uh, a logical behavior. So uh, this is uh, a trap that can uh, easily be uh, avoided. Thanks for the, the, the design kit, mostly. 
So uh, we have the screens. We uh, are moving down the, that road again. Uh, user stories now. It is time to writing the story in, in letters. By user story, I mean this is an example, a bad example, because it's very big. But we need to write down every action. What are the consequences for that? So given that you are in the context, uh, when a user or an admin is doing this action, then this have to happen. It is extremely useful for developers because they know, uh, based on the, on the wireframe, what happens if I click on that button, then it's written down. And for QA also, it's extremely important because uh, they can replay that scenario and see that the result is uh, to specs. And it takes quite a long time to write those, but it's really, really useful. For designers, it's just the, the thing they, want, they try to avoid because it takes ages. Then we have another layer of, uh, of risk analysis. Uh, obviously, we are doing that all the time, but uh, we need to, to be extremely sure that we are not introducing any security flaws. Since we are a cybersecurity company, uh, mingling with a password is <laughs> it could be quite complicated. So, of course, uh, we add an extra layer of verification on top of that. Then devs have a look at the documentation to compile the technical specs and to add them to, to that document and have the uh, technical point of view. And some adjustments can be made at, at that point, uh, which is extremely good to have the, their feedback. Then we have everything. The document is, uh, is completed. We are finalizing the, the, the whole doc. And this is what it looks like, actually, with the account recovery feature, the actual doc. Since we are open source, this doc is available. You can read it if you want, especially the, the user stories. Be my guest. For, for, you'll have a nice time. And uh, I avoided the, I didn't put the technical part here, because the, otherwise the, the pages would, would have been too small. But it's quite a thorough document. With that, anybody, any dev can take that document and, and, and develop the entire feature. So now they have the document, and they can build the entire feature. We are, again, moving on that, uh, on that timeline, on that map. Um, this is not part of the UX UI, so I won't go into details again. But sometimes there are, are feedback, so we can adjust. And then comes QA and UAT, and remember those stories? Now they are really useful. Again, sometimes some feedback, minor changes, but most of it uh, is it's done. And once the UAT uh, QA is done, it's finally the release. And that's, that was our primary goal, is to release a new feature. That's our treasure. Now the admins and the users are happy. They are not locked out. Admins can now sleep at night. They don't have nightmare about users complaining about being locked out. And this is quite a happy ending for everybody. And that's the end also of our story here. Thanks a lot for listening to me. I have one more thing. Um, a colleague and friend of mine is having another talk later, uh, around 3, 3.10. Uh, it's in French, uh, but it's really interesting. It's uh, a bit more technical also about SSO and how in end-to-end uh, uh, -end, uh, encryption was maintained by using uh, SSO authentication. So don't miss that. Uh, it will be really nice. It's his first talk, so be gentle with him. And <laughs> And also, if you want to talk to us, uh, the team, uh, we have a, a, a booth at the entrance, booth number nine. I don't know if they're numbered, but you can't miss us. We're next to the coffee. I'm sure you, you'll need some coffee at some point. And uh, yeah, don't hesitate to, to come in and, and talk with us. We will be happy to, to have a chat. Thanks again a lot. <laughs>